This video is about some mathematical example, examples of resonance and how you can figure out what are called harmonics of different situations. First off, in case you didn't get it from the video, you need to make sure you know how to count wavelengths. Uh, let's imagine this is a guitar string and it's oscillating up and down, as shown by the diagrams here. In the first picture, this right here is one half of a wavelength. The second picture is one full wavelength. The way you count these is by what I like to call footballs. This shape right here is what I'm calling a football. Every two footballs is one wavelength. So this is one, two footballs, or two half wavelengths, so a whole wavelength. This would be one, two, three footballs, so three half wavelengths, or one and a half wavelengths. And that's how you count wavelengths in diagrams like this. Every object has natural frequencies or harmonics at which it will vibrate. The first harmonic is called the fundamental harmonic. It's the one that an object will most easily vibrate at. And for the picture of the guitar string here, this is its first harmonic in the first picture. We can also figure out the wavelength of that harmonic if we know the length of the guitar string. So if we said that guitar string is length L, then the first harmonic, L equals half of the wavelength, or two of these L's would be one wavelength if you solve that out. 2L equals lambda 1. Here's our second harmonic, right here, and we notice that L, in this case, is the full wavelength, as shown here. L equals lambda 2. It is also twice the frequency of the first harmonic, so these go up in uh, multiples of whole numbers for the guitar string. Second, we have one and a half wavelengths, so th L equals one and a half wavelengths. And this is the third harmonic. It's three times the fundamental harmonic in the frequency. So if the frequency of this first one was 400 hertz, I'm just making this up, this one would be 800 hertz, and this one would be 1,200 hertz. So if you know the fundamental harmonic, then you can multiply your other harmonics by their whole number, so the second harmonic is two times the fundamental, third harmonic is three times the fundamental. Fundamental. Musicians sometimes call these the first and second overtones. So your first overtone is your second harmonic, your second overtone is your third harmonic. Any item with harmonics can be modeled as a tube open at both ends or a tube open at only one end. And we'll talk about the mathematics behind each of, those, each of those situations. But any situation involving harmonics can be modeled as an open tube. And the tube can either be open at both ends or open at one end. In the case of the tube open at both ends, the air in the tube is free to vibrate at its maximum at the open ends. And a place where vibration is at its maximum is an antinode. So you have an antinode at both ends. Remember that a wavelength is the distance between two repeating parts. These are color codes. We can easily see it. If you look at the, uh, the pink one, which I'm going to highlight in purple, we do not have a repeating part. This is not a full wavelength. We would have to carry out another one of these to get back to a crest. This is from crest to trough, so it's only one half wavelength. If we look at the red one, we see the same thing. From trough to crest, only one half wavelength. So in a tube open at both ends, your first harmonic, your fundamental, is a wavelength of twice the length of the tube. So just like on the guitar string, we only had one half wavelength there. So twice the length of the tube is the full wavelength. Once we have the wavelength, we can easily figure out the frequency since we're talking about sound and air. So we can substitute in the velocity of sound and air, divide that by the length of the pipe, or two times the length of the pipe, so dividing that by the wavelength and we get the frequency. Now this is just a solution of the wave speed equation where we're saying f equals v over lambda and here lambda is 2L. And this is our first harmonic, our fundamental in the open tube where the tube is half the wavelength. Now the rule applies when we get to our second harmonic that at the ends of the tube the air is still free to vibrate at a maximum so the only way to make that occur is if we insert a football, or a half wavelength, in between, and then we have these two making up the other half wavelength. And so now, in the tube open at both ends, the length of the tube is our wavelength. And if we were to calculate the frequency, 
we take the velocity over the wavelength, when in this case is L, and we'd get twice as much as we did in F1. So in the first one, F1 was V over 2L, now it's just F2 is V over L, which is twice the first frequency. So we just multiply, just like the guitar string, we multiply the first harmonic times whatever number we're on, so if we're on the second harmonic, times 2, to get the frequency. For the third harmonic, we have to insert another football, so the first time we inserted one football right here, now we're inserting two footballs. In this case, we'll have one wavelength in the middle, so that's one whole wavelength, and then a quarter wavelength and a quarter wavelength, so we've added a half. So now the length is one and a half wavelengths. And if we were to do the same process of solving for the frequency, we'd find out that on the third harmonic, the new frequency is three times the first harmonic. So just like I showed you on the guitar string, now with a little more mathematical proof. If you want to pause this video, I kind of glossed over how you're solving for frequency there. You might want to pause and look back over the slide and convince yourself that the frequencies shown here are in fact correct. You're just solving the wavelength equation, or the wave speed equation, V equals lambda F. Just solving that for frequency in each case and seeing how much it changes. So we're plugging in changes basically. Seeing how much it changes from the first harmonic to the second to the third. Some things you'll be expected to do is knowing what harmonic you're on and the length of a pipe, you might be asked to calculate the wavelength of the wave, or given the wavelength and the harmonic, the length of the pipe. So you'd be asked to solve one of these equations. You should be able to write those on your own, so think about how it is that we get each one. Every time we add half a wavelength, so in the first harmonic we've got one half, on the second harmonic we've got a full wavelength, one half plus one half. On the third harmonic we add another half, so we've got three halves, one half plus one half plus one half. So every harmonic on a tube open at both ends, you're adding half a wavelength. The other way of modeling a situation involving harmonics is with the tube closed at one end. At the end the tube is closed, we get a node. The air is not free to move. It, in fact, stops its movement when it reaches the edge there. However, on the outside, it's still free to move at its maximum. So we go from node to anti-node. But if you're looking here, this is only half a football, or one-fourth of a wavelength. So in the first harmonic of a tube opened at one end, L is one-fourth the wavelength. And if we were to solve for frequency, we get this, which we're just using to compare so we can see how much the other harmonics are. We actually have to skip straight to the third harmonic, and I'll show you the argument for this in a second. So in order to maintain node at one end and anti-node at the other, we've got to insert a half wavelength. So we've inserted a football here, added a football to this situation. We still have an anti-node at the open end and a node at the other. That will give us three-fourths of a wavelength. So we've got one-half right here plus one-fourth. It'll give us three-fourths. And if we solve for frequency, we've got three of the first frequency. And to kind of preserve that convention where your number of the harmonic is that many times your fundamental frequency, if we got 3F, we would call this the third harmonic because we went from F1, the first harmonic, to three times that harmonic. And so to kind of preserve that convention where the number of your harmonic is how many times the frequency you've got, that's what we're doing here. You couldn't possibly get the second harmonic in a tube open at one end you'd have to have an anti-node on both ends, and that's not possible, because we've stopped the air right here. The air isn't free to move there at the end. And then, adding another half wavelength, we skip down to the fifth harmonic by the same rationale. We've got one wavelength and a quarter. One and a quarter wavelength would be five-fourths wavelengths, and if we solve for the frequency, we find out it's five times the first harmonic. And so a tube closed at one end can only have, only has, odd harmonics. One, three, five, seven. So it only has odd harmonics. Alright, let's work through some examples here. If you were to build a pipe organ with open tube pipes, so that means we're assuming that the pipes are open at both ends, and that means that therefore we would have one half of a wavelength inside. So we'd have this situation going on, and together that makes one full football. We go from either trough to crest or on the other one crest to trough, so half a wavelength inside, on the first harmonic. And since the first harmonic is what it's easiest to make an object vibrate at, we're going to go ahead and assume that that's what the organ is doing. It's vibrating those pipes at the first harmonic. And that's the easiest one to get something to vibrate at. 
So if you build a pipe organ with open tube pipes spanning the range of human hearing from 20 hertz to 20,000 kilohertz, what would be the range of lengths of the pipe required? I've included the answer on here just so I can easily uh, check to make sure I've done this right at the end. But this question is just asking, what would be the length at 20 hertz? What would be the length at 20 kilohertz? And then that would be our range. We'd have all pipes in between there. So the length of the pipe relates to the wavelength of the frequency. So I'm going to end up needing the wavelength for each of these situations. And let's color code here. I'm going to do the 20 hertz in kind of this uh, aquamarine color. We'll also need the speed of sound in air, which is about 343 meters per second. You'll find that listed a little differently in different charts. The current accepted value is 343.2. Uh, 340 is a nice place to round. Uh, 343 is also pretty easy to remember, so I often just use it. And then we're going to need the wavelength, given by the equation V equals lambda F, the wave speed equation. By the way, if you're wondering what a really nicely drawn lambda looks like, let me try to give you one over here in the corner. Looks like an upside down Y when drawn correctly. So V equals lambda F. We're solving for wavelength, so V over F equals lambda. And now I can plug in what I've got, 343 meters per second divided by 20 hertz. And I get out of that, uh, rounding a little bit here, I get about 17.2 meters as our lambda. And if this is the first harmonic of the pipe, we know that length, so bring this up here, length equals half the wavelength. And so if we want the length of that pipe, we do L equals one half 17.2 meters, which is 8.6 meters. So the pipe that is 20 hertz would need to be 8.6 meters long because its first fundamental would be half the wavelength and that wavelength would be 17.2 meters. As you can see, sound waves that are really bass, so if you imagine bass in a car, those are long waves. Okay, moved everything over to give me a little more space. We'd already solved the equation for lambda, so when we're dealing with the second one that I'm going to do in orange, we can just start out at V over F equals lambda, and if I sub in 343 meters per second over the frequency, 20 kilohertz, 20, now kilo, normally you move the decimal three places, but since we're moving into more scientific notation territory lately, be 20 times 10 to the third hertz, kilo means 10 to the third, which is why you move the decimal three places, and if I divide that out, divide that out, I get lambda is 0 0.0172 meters, rounding a little bit there. And since this is still that open at both end pipe, length of the pipe is half the wavelength for the first harmonic, remember? So for the first harmonic, it's half the wavelength. For the second, it's the full wavelength. For the third, it's three halves for the pipe open at both ends. And so L equals one half. 0.0172 meters, or 0 0.0086 meters-ish, which when we change to scientific notation is 8.6 times 10 to the negative third meters. Okay, and that's one of the examples of things you can do with the ideas of harmonics. All right, second example. What resonant frequency would you expect from blowing across the top of an empty soda bottle that is 18 centimeters deep if you assumed it was a closed tube? So if we imagine a soda bottle, open at one end, and then down at the other end, it's closed off. It's my soda bottle. So it makes sense to assume it's a closed tube. It's open at one end, closed at the other, and 18 centimeters deep. So if we've got a tube closed at one end of some length L, inside that tube, we would have an anti-node at the open end where the air is free to move the most and a node at the other end. Okay, That's only one quarter of the wavelength. And this is what we talked about earlier. For a tube open at one end, length of the tube is one-fourth of the wavelength. Now let's get to the question they're asking about. What resonant frequency, so F, would you expect from blowing across the top of an empty soda bottle? 
And then later, how would it change if it was one-third full? So first, we're asked about the frequency, which means we're going to deal with v equals lambda f, and we're going to end up solving for the frequency. So if I solve that for frequency, v over lambda equals f. The v will be the speed of sound in air, and the lambda, if we think about this for a second, take l equals one-fourth lambda and solve that for lambda. So take this, solve it for lambda. So if l is one-fourth lambda, then lambda would be 4L. And so now if I sub that in here, I would get V over 4L equals the frequency. So now let's try this. I'll substitute in V is 343 meters per second. L is 0.18 meters. If you convert it, 0.18 meters. And that gives us a frequency of I got about 477 hertz, which is close to my rounding when I originally did it, 480 hertz, okay? So it's rounded one more place the first time I walked it through, worked it through. And now it says, how would that change if the soda bottle was one-third full of soda? So if I fill this up, one-third of that soda bottle should be pretty easy to figure out. So one-third of 18 centimeters is 6 centimeters. So we filled up one-third of it. We filled up 6 centimeters meaning the rest is still just air, so we've got 12 centimeters open now. The water will basically create a new bottom for that soda bottle, so the air will not be free to move at that point where it hits the water because the water will basically be stopping it. So if we lost one-third of the soda bottle, our new length is 12 centimeters. And we've already worked out this equation, so now let's just use it again. V over 4L equals F. So 343 meters per second divided by 4 times, this times, 0.12 meters gives us 715 hertz. Again, I rounded clearly a little differently the first time I did this. But there are answers. And you see how I did that using the ideas that we'd learned from harmonics. We can figure out what frequency something's going to make. This example in the last is actually how people who build musical instruments figure out how long to make strings, how long to make the pipes on an organ, how big to make a harmonica, that kind of thing. And so this has real life application and is fairly simple. You just got to remember the rule for 08 closed at one end means quarter wavelengths, open at one end means open at both ends means half wavelength. So you got to get those rules straight in your head, which is why I keep drawing it because if you think about the drawing what will it look like inside if it's open at both ends, air is free to move, so you've got anti-nodes at both ends. Open only at one end, air is only free to move in one place, so you've got anti-node and node at the ends. And so these rules can be hard to remember, but if you think about drawing whatever it is you're doing, the picture usually becomes pretty clear on what you have to do as far as getting the wavelength. Final example. A tube of air open at only one end is vibrating at the fifth harmonic. So remember when we have open at only one end, we know for sure we'll have a node at one side and an anti-node at the other. Now if it's up operating at the fifth harmonic, we're going to have a whole bunch of other stuff in here. We'd have to have several half footballs inserted inside between the node at one end and the anti-node at the other, as I showed you in that kind of earlier example. So let's see what we have to do though before we start diving in. Uh, this is vibrating from a tuning fork of frequency 120 hertz. So that means if we're at the fifth harmonic from a tuning fork of 120 hertz, our fifth harmonic is 120 hertz. And this makes sense. We couldn't have a fourth harmonic. We couldn't have a second harmonic. This is open only at one end. And because you end up with a quarter wavelength, you're only allowed to have odd harmonics in a tube closed at one end, as I talked about earlier. If you don't remember that, you might want to rewind to the earlier stuff. If this tube of air were to vibrate at its fundamental frequency, so that would be F1, what frequency tuning fork would be needed at the open end? Oh, this should be easy. So remember that F5 is just 5 times F1. Whatever harmonic you're at is that many times your fundamental, or your F1. So therefore, 120 hertz is equal to 5 F1. Now if I just divide by 5 on both sides, 
I find out F1 equals 24 hertz, which is what I did either earlier. 24 hertz. really encourage you maybe to go back and watch the uh, first three slides again. There's only about five minutes of them. Because now that you've seen the examples, it might make more sense to look at, oh yeah, open at both end means this. Open it only one end means this. So I really encourage you to rewind and watch the first five minutes again. I think it will really help stick in your head. And that's all.